to take a look today at communal mantises. So our first species example that's pretty common in the hobby are these Philocrania paradoxa, or the ghost mantises. And they're a leaf mimic, so they do a lot of blowing in the wind sort of motion so that they don't get detected. And they handle being in groups pretty well. Adults, adult females can be pretty vicious, so these guys are all... Whoop, there's their... They're very much a, I'm just a leaf, don't bother me sort of species. Anyway, the adult females like her, I don't keep in groups, but the males do pretty darn well in groups. And younger mantises all the way up to their final molt do really good in groups. I feed the Heidei fruit flies for a while, and then once they're a little larger, I put them in escape-proof mesh enclosures and feed them red runner roaches. But there you have a ghost mantis. That's the most common communal mantis, but as I said, there are a lot of mishaps with this species. I've got two other species that are a much better example of communal, so I will show you those next. And with the cryptic mantis, uh, Scylla, Scyllabius pretiosa, I'll write everything down. The female in there just caught her fly, so I'm going to leave her alone. You can see how vicious she is. Beautiful green wings, and whoop, the male's flying off. Those are the Uthicas around there, so they lay pretty small Uthicas. This is a smaller species, but the males are still a pretty reasonable size. Um, very, very thin, thin legs and appendages. Um, kind of a common species with different communal species trends is that the, they prefer smaller prey. So you're going to have mantises that are very thinly built and don't want anything even close to the size that they are, and therefore they continually do not attack their neighbors that are similar. But this is a cryptic mantis. can handle a lot of different humidity and temperatures. Very good desk pet. Very sturdy species. I would suggest to anyone. The males are pretty flighty. He already flew off my hand once. Um, but there we go. Just don't, yep, just don't put them outside or they take off. And we'll look at one more species that is the best at being communal. And this last species is the cat eye mantis, and they are amazing as communal. There's a male right there with its full-size wings. I'm pretty sure this one here is a female. And she has one more molt to go. These are the little wing buds here, but this species is very easy to handle. And not too much mismolt for how thin their bodies are, but they do great together in an enclosure. And would be my top for communal mantises for sure. Very easy to care for, very easy to handle. Um, their biggest hurdle is they do like, again, as I was saying, they want smaller species to eat, and they're very shy. So feeding them can be a little bit of a challenge because you either need smaller flying prey, so you have to maintain and culture flies, or you need to be very gentle when you try to hand feed them. I can hand feed them superworms. I just open up the insects so that there's some taste to it and then bump it up against their mouth and pretty soon they realize that it's food and they grab a hold of it. So I've been able to hand feed these as well as offer fra flies. But in my lapses of having enough flies available, I have not had any cannibalism. They wait until there's flies available, which a lot of other species will not do. And those are our communals. So we had the ghost mantis, the cryptic, and the Cat eye are my top three communal species that I work with. A lot easier because you can have all the nymphs together. Um, a secret for species that need more flighty prey because they're shy, unlike a lot of roach. Some species will just go straight after a roach. These guys kind of want stuff to fly by them. Um, and so here's my fly culturing. I just keep the spikes. Um, if you look up fishing supply spikes, you can end up getting the maggots what they are. 
Um, and then as they turn dark brown, there's regular spikes in here, and then as they turn dark brown, they get put in here. And then I hold, put this in room temperature, and it hatches out flies. And then I put it back in the fridge so that I can catch the flies, because they slow down in the fridge. And then I put the flies in for these guys, and they nibble down. So there you go. Little tip on fly culturing for the species that are communal, which usually prefer flies. And thanks for watching. There's a couple, there's actually a lot of videos I have on different mantis species, so if you had any interest in these, keep uh, browsing through my videos. Don't forget to please the algorithm, like, and subscribe. And also keep an eye out for my other projects. I'm working on a bug zoo and create ambassador situations where these animals can really represent how amazing they are because they really are. Thanks for watching.